So in this video, we're going to go through the steps for hypothesis testing for a claim about a proportion. And we're going to go through the steps that are in your notes, and we're going to go through an example at the same time. So the first step is to determine the null and the alternative hypotheses. And the first part of this step is to actually write down the claim or the statement being made. And the reason for doing that is that for one thing, that gives you an introduction to the hypothesis test. It's also going to help you write your null and alternative hypotheses. So here's our example. It has been reported that the probability that an individual will develop schizophrenia over their lifetime is 0.004. In a random sample of 3,000 individuals, it was determined that 17 developed schizophrenia. Is there evidence to support the claim that the true proportion of people who will develop schizophrenia is different than 0.004? So the claim or the statement being made here is right here. It even says the claim. It's that the true proportion of people who will develop schizophrenia is different than 0.004. So that's what we would exactly what we would write down. So if it says something about here's the claim, then the claim is exactly what you write down. So from that, we're going to figure out what kind of parameter we're testing. And for this week, we're doing everything to do with proportions. So this is talking about a proportion, and it even uses the word proportion. For some of these, um, it won't actually use the word proportion. It'll say something about percentage instead but this one actually uses the word proportion. So our parameter is a proportion, which we use a P for that. And then we have to figure out what inequality. Our inequality is either going to be a less than, a greater than, or not equal to. And if it doesn't give you a clue about being less than or greater than, if it just says something like it's changed or it's different, then that means that it's going to be a not equal to. So in this, our Inequality we're using is a not equal to. And the value that it gave us in the claim was 0.004. That's what we're comparing our um, test values to. So that's the value that we'll use in our null and alternative hypotheses. So from those three things, that allows us to write our alternative hypothesis, which is the H1. So our alternative hypothesis is P is not equal to 0.004. Once you have that, then you can go back and write the null hypothesis really easily just by replacing your inequality with an equal sign. So our null hypothesis, the H0, is P equals 0.004. The alternative is P is not equal to 0.004. So we've got done with step one. Step two is to choose the level of significance, which is the alpha. And in most of the problems you'll be doing, this will be chosen for you. They will tell you to use a certain level of significance. If you actually have to choose one, then you need to base your decision on the seriousness of making a type 1 error. And for that reason, part of this step is figuring out what a type 1 error would be in this situation. So in this situation, a type 1 error would be supporting the claim that the proportion is different than 0.004 when the true proportion actually is 0.004. So let's say that we think the consequences of this error are very, not very serious, so we could make alpha a little bit bigger. Again, our typical values for alpha are 10%, 5%, or 0.01, or 1%, which is 0.01. So if we think the consequences of making a type 1 error aren't all that serious, we could make the alpha bigger, which would be 10%. So that's where we got the alpha equals 0.10. Okay, so for step three, we want to compute our test statistic. And for this, we have to write, we have to choose the right formula. And again, in this section, we're just talking about proportions. So the handout gives you the two formulas to use if you have a mean or a proportion. So since we already know this is about a proportion, we can choose this correct formula. And then the hard part about this is figuring out where to put the numbers in. The ones with the zeros 
always come from your hypotheses. So for the P0, we're going to use the 0 0.004. And in this one, the P hat and the N, those come from your sample data. So back up here in the problem, we had a random sample of 3,000 individuals, and here was our sample results. 17 out of those de developed schizophrenia. So to figure out our sample proportion, that would be the proportion of people in the sample that developed schizophrenia, which was 17 divided by 3,000. So the decimal value of our p hat, our sample proportion, is 0 0.006, and that goes in here. Our sample size was 3,000, so that's where we what we put in for the n. And if you calculate all this out, it comes out to 1.736. And the z0 part of this is important just because it tells you um, what to use in your next step. So go ahead and write that in there. And in the next unit, when we talk about the means, that will be instead of a z, that will be a t. But for these problems, it is always going to be a z. All right, so the next steps in our hypothesis test are to find the p-value and then use that to get our conclusions. So for the p-value, we're going to look at our test statistic. We just found that. It was the 1.736. And we also have to look at what type of test we have. And that just depends on what the inequality was in our alternative hypothesis. So if we go back and look at our alternative hypothesis, it was had a not equal to as the inequality. That means that we have a two-tailed test. So if we look at the picture here for a two-tailed test, what we have to do for that is look at what our test statistic came out to be. Our test statistic is a positive 1.736. So that means that we're going to be looking at the area in the tail to the right of 1.736. We'll find that area, which is the same as a probability. And then because it's a two-tailed test, we have to take that and multiply it by two. Okay, so we have our two-tailed test. So here's our test statistic in our picture. We want the area in the tail to the right of our 1.736. So to get that, we would go back to our graphing calculator, the normal CDF function. We put in 1.736 as our lower bound, a big positive number as our upper bound, and this is talking about z, so that means our mean is zero and our standard deviation is one. That automatically tells us we have a standard normal distribution. So if we put that in, we're going to get that value, and then because this was a two-tailed test, we're going to multiply that value by 2, and altogether that gives us an answer for our p-value of 0 0.083. So that's basically taking this and then saying it could also be on the other side. That's why we're multiplying by 2. All right, and then part B of this step is to actually take the p-value we just found and compare it to the alpha, which we had back in step two. So back in step two, we decided to set our alpha at 0.10, and now we're gonna compare that with our p-value. And for this, we always use this inequality. We put our p-value on the left side, our alpha on the right side, this is always a less than or equal to, and then we want to determine whether that inequality is true or false. So in this case, our p-value is the 0.083. We have the less than or equal to, and our alpha was 0.10. If we look at this statement, it is true because 0 0.083 is less than 0 0.10. So if we have a true statement, then we get a positive test result. And here's where this is a little bit confusing with your conclusions, just the way that statisticians word these things. A positive test result means that we do reject the null hypothesis. So here, if we have a positive test result, 
it's that we do reject the null hypothesis. If we had a negative test result, it would be do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and then for our final conclusion, it will also be positive, and that means that we say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim, and then you just rewrite the claim that you wrote in, in the first step of step one. So if it's a positive conclusion, then we say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. If it's negative, we say there's not sufficient evidence to support the claim. So in both of these two parts, if we have a negative test result, then we include the word not in here. If we have a positive test result, we don't have the word not. So positive test result means we do reject the null hypothesis and there is sufficient evidence. So in this case, our conclusion was positive, and so we did come up with sufficient evidence to support the claim.